Welcome to the first episode of Ask Richie. Matthew asked, what equipment do I need to buy to turn my computer into a recording studio? Most people get GarageBand or other free programs that come with their computers. Where you'll run into problems is with uh, recording vocals or guitars or anytime you have to plug something into the computer. The computer's built-in interface usually isn't good enough to handle stuff like that. So here's a list of gear that you need to get started. You'll need a microphone, an audio interface, a digital audio workstation software application, a pair of speakers, and a pair of headphones. Don't forget you'll also need cables, stands, a pop filter, and any other accessories to hook all this stuff up. Let's go through the pieces one by one. The microphone is the first step in the chain. It's obviously the most important step because this is what's capturing your voice or your acoustic instrument or whatever you're recording. Don't cheap out in this area. If you're budgeting your studio, I would definitely allocate the most money to the microphone because that's gonna make the biggest impact. Usually, I like to get a condenser microphone that's good for vocals and a dynamic microphone that's something that can handle a drum set or a loud brass instrument or something I can put in front of a guitar amp if I'm micing a guitar amp. You can get a pretty nice vocal condenser microphone for starting 350 and up. Uh, the one that I use is the Audio-Technica 4033, which is right here. This is it. If you have two condenser mics, then you could do stereo micings of uh, you know, room recordings, overhead for drums, and that really opens up a lot of possibilities for you. The next piece of gear in the chain is the audio interface. Now, this is responsible for, for converting the acoustic signals into digital signals. A lot of high-end audio interfaces don't have built-in mic preamps. Now, if we're doing a starter studio or a beginner studio, we definitely want to have an audio interface that has mic preamps on it. Uh, another thing you're going to start to see when you look at audio interfaces is the number of channels they have. This tells you how many things you can record simultaneously. So for example, an eight channel interface will let you record eight things at once. And this is really important if you want to say record a drum set and mic up every drum. You'll need at least eight to handle the kick drum, snare drum, toms, overheads, hi-hat, ride. That's eight right there. That's if you have a four piece kit. If you have a five piece kit, you'll need nine. Say you're just someone who plays guitar and sings and you only want to record two things at once. Well then you can get a two channel interface with two mic preamps in it and you'll probably save some money. There's also the portability factor. Some interfaces are small enough to throw in your backpack or laptop case while others need to be rack mounted. Another thing to consider are the types of inputs and outputs the interface has. For example, one interface you're looking at might have one headphone output, but if you frequently collaborate with someone else, you might want one with two headphone outputs so you can both listen at the same time. You might want to plug your guitar directly into the interface, so you might want to find something with a guitar input. There are a lot of different options for digital audio workstation applications. The most popular one is Pro Tools, but and that runs on Mac and PC. A lot of them do. Logic is also popular, but that runs on Mac only. You can also get Cubase, Uendo, Sonar, Acid, Ableton Live. Basically, I recommend that you go online, take a look at the demos or tutorial videos, and find out which one has the workflow that you like. Next, you'll need speakers. A lot of people say, I don't need speakers, I have headphones, or I'm plugging into my stereo. It's a good idea to get dedicated recording speakers because it'll make your mixes sound better. I also recommend getting powered speakers because this way you don't need to have a dedicated power amp. Powered speakers, you can take the outputs from your interface, plug it right into the speakers, and you're done. Headphones are important for recording vocals or acoustic instruments. For example, if I'm recording an acoustic guitar with a click, I don't want the click to bleed into my tracks. Meaning, if I'm listening to the click coming out of the speakers and playing my guitar with it, well guess what? The microphone that I'm putting in front of my guitar is gonna record that click and that's gonna be in my finished product. I don't want that. So I recommend getting a good pair of studio headphones that cover your entire ear and reduce leakage from the headphones into the microphone. And the last thing you need are cables. You need XLR cables to go from the microphone to the interface quarter inch instrument cables to go from say your keyboard or your guitar into the interface. Uh, you need cables to go from the interface to the speakers so it's very important to look at what kind of connections your interface has and your speakers have. You'll need stands because you want to hold the mic. You'll need a pop filter, very important. A pop filter, when you talk into a microphone without a pop filter, all the P sounds and B sounds will sound really explosive and will blow up your track. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below or uh, ask questions for the next episode of Ask Richie.